What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work here, lady. All right, this story's called Assaulted Even Though I Don't Work There. Disclaimer, my spelling and punctuation are not the best, so expect mistakes in spelling and punctuation. Also posted in Entitled People, English is my first language, but my grammar is not all that good. This has nothing to do with my entitled aunt, many of you have read my posts about. This is my encounter with an entitled crazy woman that thinks the world should always bow to her wishes. A little background. I am single, having never remarried after my wife passed away from a sudden and deadly illness. And since the pandemic hit, my grandmother, who's in her 90s, and my cousin and her mother have been living with me. Never had any problems with them, and they do help around the house as they can, and even pitch in on the bills from time to time, which I love about them. My cousin is a special needs boy, and has a compromised immune system, as well as my grandma being old, does not have as strong an immune system as she used to. As such, such, when I do have to go out, I take the precaution of taking a shower when I come home and put on a fresh set of clothing, taking care to not expose them to the worn set before I wash them. Necessary in my view with the pandemic going on. Normally, I would order in whatever we need, but at the time this happened, I could not. Something to do with their system going buggy or something. With that, let's get on with the story. This happened a little earlier today, and I'm still fuming over it. Yes, I did press charges. Early Earlier today, I decided to go shopping, even though some members of my household are higher risk for the pandemic going on, but we still needed food and a few things for a special diet one of them had to eat. In the store, once I got there, I grabbed a cart and began to shop. I had been shopping for about 20 minutes when I heard someone snapping their fingers. I ignored it because I didn't work there and was wearing jeans and a black shirt with insane clown posse on it. No way anyone could mistake me for an employee. Or so I thought. Next thing I knew was someone yelling in my ear. Are you gonna help me or not? I jumped, exclaiming loudly. What the? When I got turned around, there was a carrot. Short haired, in clothes, one size too small for her, large and with a sour look on her face. She shouted again. Help me now or I'm getting you fired. I told her just as loudly. I don't work here, lady. Lady, now step off and go bother an actual employee. She stepped back, mouth agape like she had never been shouted back at in her entire life, and wound up to slap me. I blocked her swing and said, that's one. She tried to slap me again, and I blocked it. That's two. One more and I slap you back, woman. She screamed, I'm getting you fired, and stomped off. I yelled, don't let the doorknob hit you in your ass on the way out, bimbo, as she looked left. I saw her shoulders jerk as if she had gotten hit in the back and kept going. I continued with my shopping, albeit angrily. I was done with people at the moment and wanted to finish and get back home. An employee approached me and asked what all the yelling was about, so I told her everything. I could tell she was smirking when I told her what I said as the crazy woman stomped off. So we chatted as I shopped and the employee's words were helping considerably to calm me down when we heard that nasty voice again. That's him! The one who wouldn't help me and threaten me when I asked for his help! I want him fired right now! The manager looked confused. Ma'am, he doesn't work here. I cannot fire customers. Yes, he does! She yelled at him. Fire him right now or I'm filing a complaint with corporate! You're certainly welcome to do that, ma'am, but he does not work here. She lost her crap then. Her face went purple and charged at me. And, man, to slap me this time. I normally am opposed to hitting women, but out of pure defensive instinct, I slapped her back. Hard enough to spin her around and knock her down. By this time, store security had arrived and restrained me, thinking I was the one to instigate the incident. The crazy woman got up off the floor and started screaming assault and demanding the police be called. In the meantime, she tried several more times to get me and slap me again and wound up being restrained herself. 
During this, the employee had been speaking to the manager over her yelling and told him what had actually happened and had her demand had had hear her had heard her demands two aisles away and came to investigate. Apparently, she had managed to come into the aisle to see her try to slap me a second time in my warning to her. When the police arrived, she went off on a profanity-laced rant demanding I be fired and arrested and that she was gonna be able to live off the suit she intended to file. The police walked me a few feet away while she ranted and raved and asked me what happened. So I told them and that the footage from the security cameras would provide proof of my side of the story. So while one listened to her side of the story, one went and checked the recordings. They came back, one took out his cuffs while the crazy woman looked smug and said some rude things, but was shocked when the officer told her to turn around and to not resist. They had to literally drag her out of the store, kicking and screaming all the way, threatening to have their jobs, and screaming how she was the victim here, and more I cannot put here because of the language. I was asked a few minutes later by one of the officers if I would like to press charges, since from viewing the recordings, it was obvious I was defending myself and did not use excessive force. Of course I said yes. I also found out later she has harassed other shoppers before, but had never assaulted anyone before. So now she's sitting in jail, having not been able to bail her out, and her own family. A few who have contacted me and profusely apologized for her actions, which I told them to not worry about it. They're not being held to blame for her actions. And none of them are willing to pay her bail so she can get out and start her shenanigans again. I suspect there's more to it than that. But I do know she has been banned from the store now after that for life. I will update as more information becomes available that I can post. Damn! I'm glad she received swift justice and hopefully she becomes more aware of her craziness and I don't know. It sucks not having anyone in your corner. Even if she does deserve to be lonely. Hopefully she won't deserve that soon and she can have a nice life. You know what I'm saying? Of course you do. This story's called, If You Need My Help, You Can Come Back On Saturday. I've been lurking here for a while, and I recently remembered a story from years ago. Context. My grandfather ran a local light shop in rural Australia for nearly a decade. During my high school years, I wasn't quite ready to be home without supervision, so I would spend my afternoons at the shop doing homework and reading. I also worked there on Saturdays until we closed, and was on good terms with the two employees and obviously with my grandfather and grandmother who also worked there on occasion. I'm also taller than all the other workers, so I often got lights up and down from the ceiling. The story. Here's the cast. There's uh, me, employee, grandfather, Karen. I just finished a long day at school on a sweltering late summer day, so I went straight to the employee kitchen where I spent time after school, but was stopped by employee one who needed help getting a light down for a lady who looked about a hundred. I said sure, getting the light down and handing it over to employee one. She thanked me and for some reason, the 100 year old lady handed me a $5 note. I tried to return it, but she refused, saying I reminded her of her own grandson and that she thinks he even goes to my school. I was wearing my Catholic school uniform, which looks nothing like the work uniform the employees wore. This will be relevant later. I continued walking to the kitchen as I was almost into the employee only area when a woman around 40, Karen haircut before it was a thing, tapped me on the shoulder. I wheeled around and saw she was holding a rather expensive lamp, which I tagged myself last Saturday. It was worth a little under $500. Can you ring this up for me? She started sounding pretty kind, but it got ugly quick. Sorry, ma'am. I'm not wor- And can I get a discount? I could get this at competitor store for half the price. Ma'am, if you need my help, I'm I'm not available until Saturday. I then went to open the door again. That's when Karen grabbed my arm. You lying little cooter! This place is closed on Saturday! It never was or ever has been. I want a word with your boss! I poked my head through the half-open door and called out for my grandfather. Calling him by the name, I called him as my parents' parent, not his real name. He came out a few seconds later. Hi, OP. Hi, Karen. Apparently, she was a regular. 
What's the matter? This kid is refusing to let me pay for my lamp. She's brandishing it like a weapon. I'll go somewhere else if your employees are gonna treat me like this. Sorry, Karen, but he's off work today. He's a student. He indicates to the uniform and the bag I'm wearing. He helped that lady. She points in the general direction of where I pulled down the light, but employee one and the lady are now at the counter, out of view of the three of us. My grandpa looks at where she's pointing, then at me. Karen's hand on my arm, then straight into Karen's soul. I've never seen him upset in my life, but he looks mad as hell. Karen, if you're willing to come up the front with me, I can ring you up. No, you can't cover up for your crappy employees. He's totally capable. You're right, Karen. I can't cover up for bad service, but I can protect my grandson. He then wrenches her hand off my arm, took the lamp, gave it to me, and pointed to where it was before lightly pushing me in that direction. He then escorted her out the front door. That Saturday, beside the till was a list with banned customers written at the top. Karen's full name was written directly below. When the store closed last year, Karen was the only one on that list. Edit. I never saw her again, but apparently she returned once and was told she was permanently banned. She was so angry, she cracked the window in the front door on her way out. Damn. First of all, Grandpa, you a badass for your situational awareness. Hell yeah. <laughs> Second, Karen, you're a dingus, but you already know that. If you know anything. Ha! <laughs> This story's called, I don't work here, yet. I stumbled onto this page and was reminded of a story from a few years back. Apologies for the grammar and format, using a mobile. A bit of background. I was working for an Australian internet phone provider in the complaints department in Australia. After a few years working in the call center, I saw an advertised role for a sales assistant and assistant manager at a retail location close to home. I thought, why not? So I applied for the sales assistant role in was called in for an interview. As I'm waiting to be called in, I could just see a woman muttering angrily to herself waiting to be served. Here's the cast. There's me, owner, hiring manager, and crazy bimbo lady. HR comes out to me and says, thanks for your patience. We are ready for you to come through now. Choosing crazy bimbo lady screams, are you freaking serious? I've been waiting over an hour to be served. How dare you cut in line? This is a lie. I always always arrive half an hour early to any interview and I was there before her. I'm sorry ma'am, he's not a customer and he doesn't work here. He's here for an interview. I don't care, I want to speak to someone now or I'm going to start breaking things. HR was starting to search for available staff, but all were serving someone. I'm sorry, ma'am, I don't work here. But if you want, I'm more than happy to help. What seems to be the issue? Insert crazy tirade about how company is crooked and is stealing my money and cut my phone off, etc. Meanwhile, HR is just standing there watching me. I ask HR, do you mind if I use a vacant PC to assist? <laughs> Go for it. I proceed to log in as I already have the profile due to still being employed at a call center. Turns out crazy bimbo lady has had an overdue account and was not sent a bill due to moving and not updating her address, so her mobile was restricted until the balance was paid. I assist her with taking payment, unbarring her account, all whilst keeping this she banshee from screaming. After she starts to calm down, she begins chatting and laughing as I'm helping her. It took roughly 15 minutes. Would have taken five if she didn't spend 10 minutes yelling first. She says, thanks, can I get your card so I can come see you next time? Oh, I don't actually work here. I'm just here for an interview. She gives me a confused look, then turns to HR. I would hire him if I were you. After she left, I went into the office to begin the interview and was told the interview was no longer required. I was hired on the spot for the assistant manager position. So if you're out there, crazy bimbo lady, thanks to you, not only did I get hired without an interview, I got the senior role I didn't even apply for. A bit of a twist on a night don't work here, lady. <laughs> wow, looky here. We have a whole ass M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> I don't work here, lady story. Except that wasn't really a big, big twist. I mean, relative to the night don't work here, lady story, yeah, it is. I'm really glad you got that, that uh, assistant manager position. You're smart for taking advantage of that situation. Uh, most people just sit quiet and, like, you know, let everyone take care of it. But you stepped up. That's cool.
All right, this story's called, Sure, I'll help you, but I'll have to charge. Just a reminder that this is a throwaway account. I've had stories in the past that people give awards to, pretty much wasting their money. This happened yesterday, November 29th, 2020. For context, I used to work at a partner company of the phone retailer with the red check mark. I quit for reasons I won't go into. Because they suck? I was going into the store to return the key. As I was driving, a lady grabbed my arm tightly. Like I said, this is mid Brovid. I immediately recognized her as a regular who's always having issues with her phone, or rather, doesn't have a brain cell to learn how to use it. I yanked my arm away, grumbling a bit, preparing for the abuse I knew came with helping her. Aren't you gonna help me? She shrieked, her voice shrill, nails on a chalkboard. Help you? Why would I? I scoffed. Because you work here? She snapped. No, I don't. I used to, but I quit last week. I don't care! You're here! Here! Help me! I sighed and thought for a second, then got a devilish smirk. Fine, since I don't work here, I'll have to charge my freelance fees. She got a look on her face as if I just told her grass was always pink. Freelance fees? Yep. When I'm not on the clock, I charge 40 bucks per hour, minimum of two hours. I knew she wouldn't go for it. As expected, she started screaming and berating me. I didn't have time for her beaver sausage, so I walked out the door and continued my day with a bit of a smile on my face. Okay, Thanos. <laughs> uh, that must have been pretty satisfying. Um, but wish she got paid, which she did. That'd been great. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.